So um, we want to talk about the Arundel, so I guess we'll get into that. I guess let's start really broad, and I just want you to give me your general thoughts on the deal. So three years ago, the whole idea was it would be an exchange. You dismantle the nuclear program in return for dismantling the, the sanctions regime. What we've seen over these three years, and this is where we began opposing this process, was, well, very significant elements of the nuclear program will stay in place, yet the sanctions will be dismantled. You know, there, there are two options with a dictatorship. You either accommodate them or you pressure them. We think that many of the people that um, support the agreement believe that Iran is on the verge of some sort of transformation and that this agreement will be a tool, a transformative tool in, 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 in bringing Iran closer to the community of nations and into some sort of uh, more responsible behavior. The reality that we see in the Middle East is, is Iran uh, on the march. Uh, Iran is expanding its, its influence. We see that when Israel's borders um, becoming more and more aggressive, more and more extreme, not, not a country that's moderating in any way. And this is a regime that will receive legitimacy, the ability to have a nuclear program, which will make them almost untouchable in their own minds, uh, and um, this infusion of billions of dollars in cash. This is not only weaken them. Uh, you've got to place conditions on uh, removing all the leverage, because you know the nightmare scenario is the following. You know, they go through the agreement. Uh, within a year or so, the UN sanctions are removed, the EU sanctions are removed, the US sanctions are removed. Right. Then what leverage do you have? And how do you stop them from cheating two, three years down the road? So we retain the, op the, the, the option for snapback you know, sanctions, but you know, that doesn't include all those contracts that didn't sign. Is it better to have a legitimized and tarnished program than it is to have an illegal program that the rest of the world doesn't want that's bigger? It's not that you're taking away significant portions of their program. Significant portions of the program are still in place, um, and even if they comply with the agreement, which they, we doubt that they will, uh, because they can they can violate the agreement, they can cheat on the agreement. Uh, but even if they comply, uh, it's not enough to stop them. That's our main concern. How do Israel and the United States move forward with a country that they just continually say they distrust? So the question is, how do you deal with a violent dictatorship that is? Pressing the rights of its own people, that is expanding in the Middle East, have calls for its own destruction. And, and, and by the way, they do it I mean, this week. Israel should be annihilated with the statement that they made after the agreement has been finalized, as Congress is. Well, they also the say end. death to America. There's well, what you do. say to your hardline parties, and there's what well, you say to the rest of the international They say they do. I mean, they're also, you know, they've got 100,000 rockets facing Israel from southern Lebanon through their proxies, Hezbollah, that they created, and that's an arm of Iran in our part of the world. So it's not just the words that we're concerned about. It. You, you talk about this is a bad deal for Israel, um, but the United States gets a decent amount of what it wants in here. Do you think this is a bad deal for the United States as well? We think this is a bad deal for Israel, mm -hmm. for the future of the Middle East, right. for the security of the world, including the United States. So by a transfer of property, it's a bad deal for the United it's States. A bad, it's a bad deal for the United States.